did make the corrections to the April minutes um, of Carrie's spelling and sent those to Faith. Any motion and then any discussion on the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion. I Sarah? I second. I'll second. Okay. Rachel, I think that Allison beat you. So yeah, she got me. Uh, any changes to the minutes? No. Nothing? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, so pass unanimously. So our first, are you ready, Eric, or? Um, well, I mean, yes and no. It'd be great if I could project some of the stuff. I have some stuff printed. Um, I think maybe if I just identify, is there anyone AV or tech um, savvy here? Not my What do you need for tech? I just, I've got this here. I'm just trying to project um, a PDF onto one of these screens. It will make it a little bit easier. Um, does it pick up a, are you and what, what Faith had indicated is that he had to plug his computer into HDMI outlet and it'll be all set. And that's what we're just trying to figure out. So he can show on the screen the reservoir park. If you go So while he's working on that, let's just explain um, where we're at on Reservoir Park uh, development. This is something that the City Commission approved uh, spending money on last, I don't know, February or March, mm -hmm. I guess it was. And our objective tonight, uh, we've been working with um, Violet, yeah, so my, maybe I'll introduce myself. Yeah, I think I, I, I missed um, that. My, my name is Eric Meadows. I'm a landscape architect. I work for um, Ben Young Landscape Architects in Bozeman. I'm also, I live here um, in Livingston. And so um, my, a coworker of mine actually got approached by, by Allison, a member of the Tra Parks and Trails Committee, about uh, doing some kind of volunteer pro bono work to help. Um, I guess kind of initially was with some of the some graphic kind of components um, in, in terms of helping um, kind of uh, provide a graphic vision of, 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 a, of a site plan um, for um, uh, for Reservoir Park. And um, when we kind of stepped back and said, hey, you know, that, that's great and all, but I think, you know, in order to get to this site plan, really we see this as kind of a, a, a series of steps, kind of um, ABC. And so I think. Um, this is kind of where you were yeah. going to kind of jump in and maybe explain where we are in that process. And I've got some. Um, right. So w we approached the city to find out um, what's possible and what's not possible at uh, Reservoir Park. This was listed in uh, Livingston Parks and Trails Master Plan, which was 2012, as a place where there could be a fenced dog park, community gardens, and a playground. And that was the basis for which we started looking at options for Reservoir Park. We've had a couple of visits up there with Shannon and Eric. Um, we also met with Eric and Kendra. Um, and with the idea that tonight, what we're going to look at are some of the ideas that the landscape architects developed that we would then go to the public with and say, here are some ideas for uh, the park and the kinds of activities or facilities might be in place at that park. Ask the public what they think and then go back to um, the city and say, here's what the public said. What do you think is this possible? Right now, the city has suggested that their um, preference is that a fenced dog park be on the east end of the park. Um, part of that is because of the slope of the park. Um, they're not anxious to see anything permanent in the, on the west side because of all the infrastructure, water lines, etc., that are going underneath that part of the ground. So that's sort of where we're at. And so Eric has two sort of subjects here he's talking about. One is what he calls the bubble diagrams. Um, which will show different things that if 
we will make some suggestions to them, or we may take one of them as is and go to the public with. The second thing are just ideas that are similar to what was used in the growth policy with images of various activities, and people can just tell us what they'd like to see at the park or not want to see. Yes, thank you. So, without being too redundant, um, you know, this is, um, I guess us, me as a landscape architect, love working on parks. It's, you know, there's incredible value um, socially, you know, health, uh, environmental, and, and economic. Um, and I think, um, you know, it, it's really also important that kind of, um, as we consider that kind of for all parks, that as we, as we start to, you know, think about park and park design, that it's reflective of, you know, the community that, that, that we're in so that, um, you know, whether it's in Billings or Missoula, that, you know, the park um, has an opportunity to kind of be reflective of, of the community. And that's kind of a discussion, um, you know, I guess my, some of my hope is it's more of a discussion tonight than a presentation because we're at the stage that we're really wanting to solicit information from Parks and Trail committee members, residents, and, you know, neighbors that will use the park to hear how they envision this space. Um, so, you know, we have some very early kind of concept level designs, and I'll show kind of where we are hypothetically in that process, getting to kind of what would be a final design. Um, so, Gene kind of mentioned some of the initial program elements that are being considered, and we'll, we'll kind of get there, but um, just wanted to kind of mention that there's a lot of opportunities when we think about park um, beyond just kind of the programming. If there is a dog park, is there an opportunity for it to be kind of a, a Livingston dog park? So, what does that mean? Is it is it a shade structure that takes on some, you know, kind of rail character or kind of a, a grain character? There's a lot of ways that um, we can start to use design to kind of reference and, 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 and locate, um, uh, you know, a place that is. Um, so here's kind of um, a, kind of a high level, I guess, of where um, we, we kind of envision um, it being in, you know, um, in that process, Gene mentioned kind of um, a, a site visit that we did. There's been some early discussion with um, Public Works, and also there's the the, um, the 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 Master Parks and Trails Master Plan that was done in 2012 or roughly 10 years ago that started to also kind of suggest some of that programming. So that's kind of that background research and site visit. Um, you know, tonight we're here to talk about kind of these the design concepts, bubble diagrams, and hopefully then there's some um, potentially additional kind of community outreach and feedback events that will showcase those um, uh, design concepts that we're going to talk about tonight that can further kind of, um, you know, bring to front what, what some of the community members would like to see um, in some of the, the design of this park. Um, most everyone's familiar with the site, anyone not familiar with the site? Um, sounds like no, but it, it's, you know, there's roughly um, kind of two parcels, there's a 2.5 acre parcel roughly speaking, um, to kind of the, uh, the northwest of a, a, excuse me, northeast of a, a smaller kind of um, half acre parcel. Um, you got North Main here, which transitions into to high ground, and then of course um, Reservoir Street kind of rough, uh, running a little bit more kind of, um, well, not quite east-west, but... Um, the, the current site, there's a lot of kind of site utilities and infrastructure already in place, and that, and that um, kind of comes into fold with some of the, um, uh, the programming and, and locations of some of that programming um, that you'll see, but there's, there's quite a bit of water, uh, you know, water infrastructure. Um, specifically, there's kind of a big utility enclosure that's fenced off at present with the water reservoir. Uh, there's a utility structure. Uh, the blue lines are, are water mains, so you can see it's a big kind of hub uh, of, of, of utilities in that sense, green uh, being some uh, sanitary sewer lines. And so we just start to map that out and we start to look at um, placement of different kind of potential park programming. We want to make sure we kind of honor um, some of these locations. Um, some great views uh, to, you know, kind of to the south, southeast. Um, uh, you know, in general, it's kind of um, sloping from kind of top to bottom. So that's um, hence and some of the views, and we're also kind of aware that there's um, some snow storage, winter snow storage, um, that takes place um, on uh, off of high ground there, largely surrounded by by residential, uh, church, um, and then there's kind of just more general kind of open space to the east. Um, so when we met with Gene and started looking at uh, you know what was developed back in in um, 2012 as it relates to some of the programming again kind of um, understood uh, or started to kind of uh, layer in some of the uh, public works concerns or just kind of 
um, making sure that those are addressed, and then you know have these to also then start to solicit um, uh, you know some uh, public comment and feedback, views of the of the site. Um, so uh, we've got three kind of um, I guess kind of bubble diagrams that start to play around with different kind of park programming and, and spatial relationships um, of, of what you know could be um, possible on the site. Um, I think the main one, the main kind of repetitive um, component that you'll see in, in all of the scenarios is a lo large dog, dog park um, kind of located, I guess, kind of what, uh, on, the, on the north kind of um, uh, east part of the, uh, of the, um, of the parcel. Uh, in this scenario, um, there's parking kind of uh, mid-span, mid -span, um, uh, kind of centered um, within the space. I think there's roughly, they're looking to put about six to eight cars, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a vault toilet, um, entrances on, on both kind of the east and west side. Um, we, we, you know, one, one idea is, is to take advantage of kind of some of the views, is to kind of put some sort of a little bit more kind of a, a destination type space that could be, uh, have kind of a signature sage structure or some sort of overlook um, that people could kind of traverse um, up this slope and, and, and reach um, kind of that, that high destination point. You've got the kind of utility um, enclosure, which will, that uh, Public Works is requesting to be fenced off. Then on the west end, um, in, in this scenario, we've got kind of more of an open kind of rec um, kind of oriented fields, whether that's kind of, uh, you know, just for pickup soccer or it could be some more organized, but it's a little bit more um, kind of just grassy open space meant for, for kind of, um, you know, kind of structured play, uh, potentially kind of a sports court, so that could maybe be a half court basketball, pickleball court, something again that kind of supports a little bit more of a recreational nature. And then um, in this kind of triangle um, uh, space, in this scenario, we're kind of proposing a, a, a larger kind of children's playground with a, with a picnic shelter. Um, to address the winds, I think, you know, which are largely coming from the west, southwest, um, you can see we've kind of got a, a, a kind of a, a heavy kind of screen buffer. Um, and then similarly in this kind of interstitial space, a little bit of kind of what we're calling like a, a passive kind of grove. Um, Kind of in in the second option, I, I might say one one quick thing about this first one um, is uh, you know within the dog park we, we kind of envision kind of more of a, a loop trail um, and in this case you can see we've kind of put a shade structure kind of up, up closer to the high um, point again kind of giving a little bit more of a destination um, that you know that people can you know be with the dogs they can oversee you know the dog if they're playing and they can kind of sit. And, uh, and and taken the view. Um, in the second um, option, the shade structure. So again, dog park entrances on on both east and west side, adjacent to parking. A, kind of a utility or, or maintenance entrance. Shade structure becomes a little bit more centralized, kind of a, a you know more of a central feature. Um, we've got proposing a, a community garden kind of. Um, kind of in this interstitial space between the dog park and kind of this utility yard. Um, thinking, you know, that's it'd be good, you know, access to the parking. Um, you know, it's still fairly level at this point before it kind of slopes up to again kind of an overlook at the west side here. A um, little bit more of, a, of just kind of a passive use uh, space. So maybe that's again kind of could be uh, given native grasses and just something that has a little bit more trails and kind of uh, uh, rustic and it's less kind of uh, structured play, whether that's kind of rec or not, compared to the first one. Um, and then in this scenario, we're looking at kind of uh, just a, a, a little bit of like a bike circuit uh, kind of skills course, um, and we have some imagery um, to support that. Uh, we know we know that there's kind of some bike trails um, in the kind of the little ravine gully, and so it seems like if there's a user group already kind of in uh, adjacent to that, is there a way to kind of pull them? into the space. Um, and then, uh, a play, again, a play, um, proposing kind of a, a children's play um, area within kind of that, uh, that rectang uh, triangular area. Uh, the third um, option is 
kind of got the, that shade structure down kind of lower, more towards the entry of the dog park. Uh, the parking is pushed a little bit more inboard um, and kind of perpendicular. Um, again, in kind of an overlook. Uh, we've moved the play area um, out from that kind of triangular air space into kind of um, more of this west end um, that could kind of have a nice spillover effect with kind of a kind of a, a, a lawn space, um, and then the, the placing the uh, the community garden um, in the triangular uh, area near the church. Um, Here's just some kind of general imagery that start to kind of help uh, support some of that the, that potential programming um, of what some of those spaces might look like. Um, dog park, fairly self-explanatory, you know. But here's uh, this is a, a, the dog park. Um, I think at the Gallatin Regional Park um, over in Bozeman, and you can see it's it's got a shade structure that's kind of taking on that doghouse type character. So there's some some ways to kind of um, have fun with some of that shade structure, and again, kind of bring in um, kind of a, 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 a um, kind of more regional kind of character to um, uh, some of the built elements. Community garden, the overlook could just be kind of a simple kind of brow, you know, seating space. Also, if there were any are any potential donors or um, you know, kind of um, people um, that that contribute to. to and, aspects of the park, this could be an option for kind of a plaques or recognition. Um, sports, you know, so you've got kind of a potential sport court, bat, half court basketball, and again, kind of just um, some additional um, rec um, that was kind of uh, showcased in, in one of the options. And then, um, you know, you've got some play, um, kind of nature-based play is a, is a big uh, uh, kind of um, there's a lot of great nature-based play kind of built equipment um, that can either come from a manufacturer or, or it can be kind of regionally or locally built. Um, so it, you know, it doesn't have to be quite um, the kind of metal with the plastic slide. There's a lot of kind of um, intuitive or kind of just um, experiential play items. You know, here you've got a play equip piece of play equipment, of course, that is a, a, a train engine. So it could you know, again take on kind of that historic kind of component. Um, Kind of recognizing the, the rails presence um, here in Livingston. Um, the bottom left is kind of that that skills park I mentioned. Kind of um, some some way to kind of bring in potential bike users. So again, it's kind of just an informal kind of circuit trail that has kind of um, different like logs or, or kind of um, elements that are incorporated in that that can really kind of uh, be used by kind of all ages and user groups. And then lastly. Kind of something that's just a little bit more passive again kind of park benches uh, uh trail you know shade trees um, so and eric it's a bit awful. my intent is to go to questions or comments from the committee then go to the public and then the committee can if it wants to make recommendations can make recommendations um just so we all know would your suggestion be that when we go to the public, whether it's at the farmer's market or up at Reservoir or wherever, that we have several bubble diagrams to show them or one with some ideas and ask them what they think? I, I would say options, um, okay. certainly, because it, it, it starts to invite, you know, a discussion about what, what is the envisioned program, you know, whether it's a community garden, dog park, bike park, someone, people might say, absolutely no bike park. Okay, that's great, because we don't have a bike park in all options. Mm -hmm. um, then also, the, so it, it's kind of the big, the big uh, aspects of feedback that we would like to hear is, what's the, what is the neighborhood and community support in terms of program that, that will get used, and you know, kind of likes and dislikes, and then kind of where they think within that space that those might be most kind of appropriate. Okay. And we can make, you know, kind of some professional um, recommendations to that capacity, mm -hmm. right? Um, but in general, it's, it's a listening kind of process that, so I think in that sense, options would be good. Okay. Yeah. Um, questions from the committee? Um, I just want to thank you so much. This is really exciting and it's wonderful to like see what we talked about the other day and like see it in print um, as some ideas and some options because 
uh, it's a blank slate and we could give the communities a really cool place to hang out. So I'm really excited about it. Thank you. Um, I don't know if I have any specific questions at the moment, but I just am excited that you're here. <laughs> uh, my, my question would be kind of fate, the idea of phases. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, $50,000, I think, is our approved budget. <laughs> And I mean, I'm just looking at the, the shade structure of like a dog house, and I'm like, that eats up a lot of our $50,000 probably. Yep. Mm -hmm. So all of this looks awesome. Like, I, I can't agree more. Like, these are fantastic. But, like, realistically speaking, how much can we get done with $50,000? And, and kind of what's, do we have to phase it? Do we have to, you know, fundraise to do do it all at once? How and What's that? What's yeah, that? I think yeah. I think both yeah. ultimately, yeah. And and but I think what's critical is that there's a there's a plan that the community and neighborhood is coalesced around. Mm -hmm. We can you know that there's a kind of a gra then there's a kind of a graphic vision that gives you that roadmap to where you know it, it wants to go. And you know as you uh, talk to uh, different community members or, or whomever are potential donors or other grants or, or something, you can start to kind of um, start to parcel that out. You know, and we can help with kind of some ideas in, in terms of phasing what that might look like in terms of, because you know there might be some sequencing um, type components. Um, but I, I think ultimately it's both, but I think having that roadmap and, and, and that kind of developed vision and say this is where we want to get, then you start to kind of tackle that ladder of how, how you get there through through funding and, and other kind of means. Sweet. Yeah. Looks really cool. I, I did have some questions about some of the diagrams. Yep. Do you feel comfortable like along high ground, especially on the first diagram um, or the third, that there's room for snow? Or yeah, I mean I think uh, there's a there's we you know we show kind of a a, a wind protection kind of buffer so we, we you know my, my thought is that it's a little bit more of kind of like a windbreak but it would be set back from that, that the curb line right there's a there is a, a water line that runs roughly parallel to you know I'm assuming it's kind of just underneath the curb here right so I mean we, we could give them that 25 foot offset or whatever um, public works might need in terms of the, the you know being able to kind of protect the integrity of that line, and that will also double as kind of that snow storage um, kind of uh, uh, space. And the shade structure, any shade structure that goes in the fenced dog park area uh -huh. will involve excavation because of the slope of, sure. of that. Right. Are, are, do these, are these to scale um, as far as how they're not drawn to a specific scale at this okay, point. Right. They're, they're more, um, again, it was kind of looking at different um, locations, I guess, for what might be, um, okay. uh, you know, is there a preferred kind of location amongst kind of the, the user group? Okay. Is, you know, is it closer to the entrance? Is it is it something more of a destination within the space? How, you know, um, and, and yeah, those have different... Um, Kind of construction and cost aspects, certainly, okay. based on based on the topography of the site. Okay. What are the black lines? On that? Are those trails? Like yeah. Like so good, good question. Um, we do see because you know one thought is that you know making sure there's kind of a connector link, I guess, because you know you're looking at the kind of the, the biggest interface is along reservoir, and if you have a, of a dog park and then this utility area, um, you know, which kind of, that, that fence kind of pushes up against those boundaries. We saw this as this kind of link component between the play, you know, this kind of, so you've got kind of node one, node two, node three, and then I guess dog park being kind of a node four. So yeah, those are kind of different uh, potential kind of trails or, or circulation um, components. Cool. Yeah, actually, I think that one around the edge would be nice to have for the sake of connecting to the HRDC trail that we're working on. Yeah, that little triangle um, to the what looks like to the north west, that residential, that's also city property. Okay. From my understanding. Um, yeah. Not that that matters, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that 
what a triangle is because we were trying to think like how to get from the bike trails you know and you're kind of you're trying to navigate that fork sure um, yeah there's that, that but walk. that's not i mean uh, i think that can be future stuff i guess my only question would be of these features do you have an idea of which have less maintenance demands than others so i mean i I know it all depends, and if people are picking up their poop, um, but sports fields and asphalt paving, if that's the case, might be a higher maintenance. Community gardens, obviously, are very high maintenance. More passive structures and groves might be um, more passive by nature. So I just wanted your yeah. Um, I think maintenance is a is a good question. I think um, certainly if there's a, you know I I guess. The sports fields will have a, a more regular kind of mowing and, and, and everything. Um, the community garden, I guess, uh, my involvement has with other kind of um, parks that have had a community garden is that they're kind of run and managed maybe by a nonprofit. So yeah. there's a little bit of, of, of maintenance that that group kind of helps exactly. maintain or people that have a plot there would kind of help participate that. Yeah. Um, the children's play structure, I guess it, it you know, um, probably has a maintenance component just in terms of, uh, you know, coming out and uh, if there's inspections of equipment or, or something like that, that would need to um, take place on at, at some frequency. The dog park, I would hope, you know, that again, it's kind of a self-policing type of scenario for, for waste or, or other components. Um, so uh, I think, you know, it's, it's a good, um, point because we certainly don't want to design and implement a park that can't be made properly maintained because then it yeah you know, it and I think with our current situation you might have picked up with public works and speaking with Shannon that is one of our biggest hurdles uh, yeah and so why build new when we can't fix with what we have already um, and so I think what's been most successful and what we're building on is is that partnership with nonprofits in the area so sure. like Livingston Bike Club I know would be very excited about maintaining anything bike, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that's their forte. And then um, the community gardens, you know, farm to school or um, would be a really good partner there too. So. Yeah, you don't have, in the triangle, you don't have um, both a play area and community gardens. Was there a reason why you decided not to include both in that area? Uh, not distinctly I okay. guess it, okay. it, it that's still an, option. an okay. option yeah yeah, okay. yeah yeah I mean I, I guess the way we look at it is like you know a lot of these are are interchangeable but by all means this is um, uh, an iterative process you know so um, if there's again if there's aspects that like I really think those two programs will work well because you know a parent could go to the community garden and take her a plot while a child could go and play and they're immediately adjacent, you know, that has a good kind of narrative and, and if that's something that um, people think is a, um, a, a worthwhile while kind of marrying of programs, then yeah. Okay. yeah. I think it's just really great. I grew up on the north side and getting to a park was really a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I still think 20 years later, well, I wasn't at parks when I was 18, but um, that 25, 30 years later, that this is like happening now, um, it's kind of neat. I mean, we know we have the soccer fields, but it's very specific, mm -hmm. sports specific to a few people. Sure. So I like the dynamic nature of it, um, playing of different elements, and that it really is a nice departure point to have discussions. So yeah, that's all I have for now. Other questions from the committee? Uh, public comment, if you want to say anything, please just identify yourself. Okay, this is for general comments about the whole proposal. Right, and especially to him. well, especially where we're at right now, which is trying to design something to go to the public with for ideas. Okay, my name's John Foster. I live on Blue Heron Drive, and I think I can speak for most, if not all, people on Blue Heron Drive. You have a really nice big open space which you're going to use to have a dog park, a community garden, a children's play area, and a bike trail. I've lived on Blue Heron Drive for 25 years. 
that open space is all of those things right now. People walk their dogs, train their dogs, play with their dogs in, in that area, and if they want to run their dogs off leash, all they have to do is go across high ground and up toward the water tower. You can run your dogs up there, and there's even the benefit of a lot of coveys of wild partridge up there if you have hunting dogs. It is a dog park, okay? And people actually walk with their dogs, so they're getting their exercise too. You want to have a children's playground. Most of the kids that would play on the sort of equipment that I've seen there, they, they're not there anymore. The kids that live in that area now are middle school, high school age, and it's already a playground for them. They play catch with their dads, they fly kites, they play around there in the summertime, they, in the wintertime, they cross-country ski, they sled down those nice steep slopes that you're pointing out. It is a playground for kids. A bike path, all the, the kids themselves built their own bike path, which is quite popular on the other side of high ground. They build it themselves. When they want to change it, all they do is move a few rocks around or bring a few boards from home and they make what they want. And they can take pride in having made it themselves and they, they can change it and do with it what they want. And a lot, a lot of kids use that bike path. As far as a community garden, we have something better. We have a huge open space of natural beauty, I'll say. I walk my dogs through there Monday morning after a rain, and the smell and the fresh air that came out of that meadow, I could have sat there for two hours and breathed that area. I didn't have it corrupted by bug spray that somebody's going to spray on their, their cabbages or weed killer that somebody's going to put on there. It was just a nice fresh uh, smell. That area is, is habitat for deer, it's habitat for rabbits, it's habitat for skunks and ground squirrels, probably at least a dozen wild birds there year round and probably another dozen species that migrate through there. During the, the spring, summer, and fall, each season has its wildflowers. It's, it's an area of natural beauty, and it's something that everybody that lives along that street enjoys. And the idea that you're going to take that beautiful open space, which used to be something that uh, people living in communities wanted. Give us open space. We have it. And you're going to take that and divide it up to, into little chunks. You talk about uh, a windbreak. Have you ever been up on Blue Heron Drive when one of those 90 mile an hour winds is blowing up there? Mm -hmm. You yeah. know how many times they had to re-roof the so-called cottages that were built over there last year? Three times before they were even there, there was even anybody living in them. The wind blows up there. It, it's incredible. There was a 101 mile an hour gust up on top of the hill where the, the uh, uh, wireless towers are last winter. And plenty of 60 mile an hour days. Have you ever seen how much snow drifts up on the top where you're talking about building fence along that dog park? Mm -hmm. When the grader goes up there and plows that street and has to do the drift two or three times and those drifts sometimes will get six feet high, you're going to be having a heck of a problem because that snow is going to roll down there and it's going to roll right through the fence you're going to have to put up at the dog park. So I think you're going to find that the people that live up there like it just the way it is. We use it for everything you want to put there, and it doesn't cost any money. We play with our dogs, we train our dogs. 
We don't need a dog park there, we got one. We don't need a bike path. We have kids that build their own bike paths and enjoy the building as much as the riding. Thank okay, you. so that's what I have to say, and like I say, I think you're going to find that the people that live there feel very much the same way I do. Thank you. So I'll, I'll try not to repeat what John has said. Um, and can you just say your name again, just because we have to record sure, that's fine. all our meetings. Yeah. Okay. Blue Heron Drive. So, okay. uh, as John mentioned, you know, there's not just on uh, Blue Heron Drive, but also or on Blue Heron, there's also. Uh, people on Reservoir Street that are concerned about this as well. So um, I'd like to start off by thanking everybody. We really appreciate you trying to beautify our communities, and I think that's a great conversation to have on how do we beautify a community. And so open space, some people put different values on open space as compared to city parks in the sense of playgrounds, um, community gardens. So there's different values that are placed on the open space. Uh, a community. How a community might look at this uh, in, in terms of the dog park, that's my real problem with this. This is the, That's the area that I don't think any of us will negotiate on, is the dog park. And um, imagine just for a second if in your community there was a dog park that people brought their dogs to take their daily crack. And then take a look at Mojo Park. I walked Mojo Park, I've got a, my, my transex marked. I'm happy to share that at some point. Um, they were 0.7 miles long. There was, in that 0.7 mile walk, and I know that Mojo Park has actually cleaned up a little bit. You have to put, someone has put signage up down that people are ticketed, you know, if they're not cleaning up after dogs. But still, I came across 22 piles of dog crap. I walked the same, not the same, but I walked a same 0.7 mile transect in Reservoir Park, one. So that's 22 times the amount of pieces you're bringing into our neighborhood. Now there is half a dozen um, bacterial diseases, most E. coli, that are transmitted from dog feces to humans, and there's three parasites. Not to mention the do not to mention numerous diseases that are transmitted dog to dog. So you're bringing into our neighborhood, and, and Mojo Park is different because there's no houses there. If I go to Mojo Park, it's because I chose to go there. I accept the responsibility. I accept the risk associated with taking my dog and myself to a dog park where I know there's excessive feces. I know there's potential of disease transmission to my dog or to me. I know my dog might get attacked in there. But now you're proposing to bring that to our neighborhood. That's, we have to live there. I go to Mojo Park, I don't go to Mojo Park. But if I do go, it's because I choose to. But I have to go to Blue Heron Drive because that's where I live. And you're trying to bring this into our neighborhood in the context that it's a community, it, I'm sure it is a community service. I'm sure that every dog owner thinks it's great to bring a dog park in, not into their neighborhood, but into somebody else's. They don't have to, they don't have to deal with that. And as you pointed out, who, who it's a self-policing venture. It will fall upon us, the residents, to police that. We will be the ones that will have to come to the city commission again and again and say, hey, look at, we have to be documented all this excessive feces in our neighborhood. Nobody's doing anything about it. This brings it into our neighborhood. That should be something that I would ask each of you to think about if this came into your neighborhood, how would you feel? So that's the detraction part of, of the proposal. I think there's common ground on how we beautify our neighborhood. My dog park is not beautiful. Moja Park, is there's a little bit of blue bunch wheatgrass. Um, mostly there's tansy mustard, flixweed, bare ground, and dog crap. High ground at the reservoir, we've, there's a little bit of invasive cheatgrass down and growing in there right now, but for the most part it's blue bunch, western wheatgrass, so lots of native legumes in the area. Um, one thing that could be reintroduced that actually be pretty cool is some native sage, silver sage that's up on, it's just up behind my house on the hill. So um, uh, that's a way to take that, um, uh, I work a lot with pollinators at times, way to turn that into something that is enhance the native plant community and enhance our native bees. There are 99% of bees, that honeybees get all the credit, but 99% of bees are actually native bees. Let's do something for them. You know? We turn this into a dog park. The native grasses are gonna disappear for the most part, and we're gonna have an expansion of cheatgrass into them. 
That's a weed. It's a huge weed. Um, we should we should try to do things that that actually improve. So the, the community garden. Um, when I think of the community garden, I don't think of, of I garden up on the hill, and it's a pain. And you wouldn't think that the 200 feet, 100 feet of elevation difference from the river bottom up to there would make a difference. It does. The growing season is close to two weeks shorter on Blue Heron Drive than it is just down on North Yellowstone Street. I would have never thought it when I moved up there, but if it snows at our house, you'll drive down the hill and it'll be raining. It happens all the time. It's a different, so the community garden themselves, you're not going to grow much. You, you grow your standards, radishes, turnips, things like that that you find. But if you're going to, uh, to me, a community garden is beautified with open space native plants. Let's put in some, if you want to do something like that, let's talk about plant communities that, uh, uh, if you want to do some kind of walk-through path, fine. But let's have native plants. Let's talk about the importance of those native plants. Sagebrush, native uh, flowering forbs, and the nitrogen they contribute to the rains, things like that. That's, that's beautiful. That's, that's taking our community and turning it into something that we can be proud of and we would help you with rather than oppose you. That's, that's I think, where a lot of the people would like to, to see this go is something that's actually going to make our neighborhood better. People, wanna, people can use it as is, as John mentioned. Um, and they can, people do, you know, so it's already use, it's not, it's not new space, it just would be advertised space that would have a lot fit into it, really, in, in the grander scheme of things. Um, as John mentioned out, you know, about the native uh, wildlife that use this, um, one of the things that um, you see down there every day, there are magpies, whether you like magpies, if they're a native bird, they're a great bird. And they're down there, the, the females are down there foraging for insects for their chicks every morning. And yeah, they can fly over to the next field, you know. And then what do we build there? You know? And then when, when we build that there, they fly somewhere else, you know. So at some point, we just have to say, you know, let's keep it native, let's keep it natural, let's keep it beautified, let's try to, to, to not think of us so much and try to think of the wildlife that uses it. Um, the, the deer spend a lot of time, especially in the wintertime, get a lot of migration into the city limits. That's one of the places that a lot of deer spend their time foraging in the winters. So we'll lose that space, they'll lose that, um, and they, they go to the next field over and then we build on that one too. So it's just kind of a, it's, it's a problem that I'm not asking you to, to solve here tonight, but I would ask that you be concerned or take into account that the community may want this, but think of what it does to our neighborhood. That's my point to ask you to bring on this tonight. So, happy to answer any questions. I think I kind of got um, my main points across on that. So, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Either of you want to comment on this? I know you're here for the next item, but thank they you. they live up there, so they they know. My family just moved up there, but they haven't been there long enough to. But I love the open field. And one other comment. Uh, I don't know exactly where you're going to build the fence. Imagine, you, you know, I mean, this is totally, you know, 10 houses on Blue Heron Drive, less than that, but you move up there because, it's, you know, it, there's no street lights, you like that. And now we're going to have a, a fence built, and you got to look through the fence to, to see the scenery. You know, I'm not sure where you're building the fence. If you build it up on Blue Heron Drive, people got to look through that to see out. If you build it off, yeah, I guess it would be more out of sight in that, but it's... Um, and if you build it, the snow drifts up there. It's only really the funny part of it is, um, it's really only been in maybe what, seven, eight years ago now, they actually started plowing, blue Heron Drive. It used to be snowed in, lived in the city limits. My wife's a nurse, and when she's on call, I'd have to chain up to get down to Reservoir Street because they didn't plow the, the and now you're gonna build a fence up there that's gonna be even more of a snow trap in the drifts. That's gonna require even more effort on our part or hopefully the, the city will do more. So uh, I'll finish up. I just I just want you to work with us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any I'd comment? like to yep. throw out one more little pearl. Um, I'm old enough to live through the protest areas in the 60s, and there was a protest song that had a line uh, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone? You pave paradise, or pave paradise and put up a parking lot. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what you want to do in our neighborhood. Thank you. Comments from, oh, Eric, did you want to say some first? I mean, yeah, I guess I'm, uh, this is just questions by all means of just trying. I mean, are there any improvements at all that you guys would support in general? I mean, a demonstration garden of, of native plants, for example, that, that have a trail loop that kids can come up and learn about native plants. I mean, is there, is there opportunities like that that you think you're, you're the, the Blue Heron Drive and, and Reservoir Street neighbors would be amenable to, or is it just don't touch it? I, I'm just asking probing questions as a to sure. help facilitate discussion more than anything. I, you know, I think his idea about uh, you know putting putting in encouraging native plants up there. One one of the things that grows up there are the the uh, uh, those blue uh, what what are the real bright blue what flax. Um, and and I, I think flax is, is a native plant. Yeah, get some of those. They, they already are started. Those are beautiful flowers. And, and any any other I mean, I'm plant. just thinking like other enhancements that you, that shade you guys trees, would. You know, shade trees, I guess, think of things that you would want in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, shade trees, um, any kind of structured paths like that, I think are, are fine. Educational opportunities are, are always a benefit. Yeah. Um, it's I, I, not everybody is. I mean, it's it's not everybody, people like it the way it is. Yeah. And I think if you enhance the way it is with more beautifying nature and natural, I think that you would everybody would get along quite well. And I think that's a good course for that place is to take what it already offers the community and enhance that. And what it offers is open space that has and that has. Potential for, uh, like, say, educational. Type. So it's, we're, we're not here as just a, you know, no, we're not. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, no, no. I, I mean, clearly, we're not here to, I, to do that. Um, I mean, if there was like yeah. a boulder structure that kids could play on, like if, if some of these elements weren't as um, developed or or as, I don't know the right word. It's not, but if, you know, if if, if they weren't screaming improvement, park improvement, but they were integrated in a, in a meaningful way that felt natural. I'm just wondering if there's, you know, like you think, there might be a balance. That's, that's kind that of the way I tried to present my comments here gotcha. was that, that there's lots of room for, for talk and, and discussion yeah. on it. Um, I don't think you're going to gain any ground on the dog park. Gotcha. That um, is a, is a non-starter. And so, um, don't interpret this the wrong way, but as long as that's part of the project, I don't think you're going to get a lot of cooperation on let's beautify a third of it and turn the rest of it into a craft field dog park. I don't think you're going to get a lot of negotiation on that. So with the rest of it, um, I think there's lots of opportunity. With discussion. Right? Yeah, yeah, lots of good discussion for people that visit. You might want to take a survey of that general area and find out how many kids live there and what their ages are because the, the kid population is aged you know kids that when we moved in were kids now have kids of their own and come visit their grandparents but they don't necessarily live right right there so before you start thinking about what you're going to put there as a playground, you might want to look at the age you're dealing with. Would there be? Okay, would, I'm would just gonna. Be, let me just go back to the committee so they can make some comments too. Um, uh, thank you for your comments. I'm Allison, and um, I actually live uh, two blocks from that space and have a young son. And um, a lot of my friends live up in the neighborhood with second, third, fourth graders. And it is, it's been a big concern in the neighborhood that our kids are playing in the neighborhood, which is great, and we let them kind of run free a little bit because we don't live in town, so we have that freedom of not as much traffic. But to go, um, well, right now the gully is, um, we're working on it, but it's private property. And then the reservoir space is open, and oftentimes, um, it, they can go throw a ball, which is great, but they do ask to, I don't know, learn about plants or 
is there something to play on? Or can I go to Sacagawea Park? Can I go to Sacagawea Park? Can I go to Sac And it's like, well, no, you can't. There's train tracks that are a little bit dangerous and a lot of traffic. So um, we want to definitely enhance the beauty of the space. We want to have that discussion because we live in that neighborhood too and we, and we don't want to like walk up to a bright red playground that really stands out to our really amazing view. Um, so I do, I personally take your comments very seriously because I live in that neighborhood too and I want it to be a wonderful space and I want our neighborhood to be better because of it. So thank Thanks. you. Connor or Sarah? I have much. I appreciate the perspectives. I mean, this is just the beginning of the conversation, so it's great to hear where the neighborhood is at. And, um, you know, Eric, I appreciate your, you know, Eric's done this a few times, and I'm, I'm excited to kind of have the conversation moving forward and see what collaboration we can find because this should be a, a space that everybody's excited about going to as many people as possible. Yeah, I think um, I think you'd be surprised at what a lot of our aesthetic choices and what we want out of what development. Um, I study sustainable development and I'm a big advocate for zero lawns. I don't want lawns, I don't want pesticides. You probably I wish Clay was here. He's our actually one of the world's leading bee experts and was responsible for No Mo May and is a pro pollinator and anti pesticide. And um, another member on our committee is not here. She joined the committee because she was upset with the decisions that were made to develop a park in her own neighborhood because she didn't like the big red primary colored plastic features and the big stone. Um, features that are made without more of a public process. Um, so I think there's a lot more that we can agree on than we'll disagree on. I think part of our challenge as a committee is that a fence and dog park is one of the highest priorities of our community overall when they ask um, for amenities that they are missing or that they would like. So our challenge as a committee is to find out where do we put that in our public space across the city? You know, where is the best place for that? Um, if it is the number one desire, but I hear you, um, you know, I, I, I want native species. I want more engagement with education around creating pro-pollinator spaces um, to enhance not just the deer and the megafauna, but also the little guys, um, the insects and, and everything else. So I think our challenge is trying to find a way to appease everyone's voice. Mm -hmm. Right, and you are the neighbors, but how do we appease everybody that's going to potentially use the area? Um, and I think we can, you know, and I appreciate the discussion, and if we can find solutions where we can find agreements instead of disagreements would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Do you, do, does anybody in the committee have recommendations for Eric on, I mean, our next step, Eric, I think your recommendation is we go to the farmer's market, we go up to Reservoir, at some point, let the neighbors know we're looking for their input. Um, are you looking for recommendations from the committee on any changes to make to the bubble diagrams? Could you add pictures, for example, to your images that show the more natural areas, like instead of a more developed area? Yeah, we, we could, I mean, I guess, two, two thoughts. One is, I, I think, in, in the community outreach process, what I've found in working different with different communities, and why I bring a farmer's market as opposed, I think, is to go to where the community is as opposed to invite the community to you. But if if if, if you all as immediate neighbors or, or community, you know, that live in there say, you know what, I think you'll actually get a really good turnout if you were to host an event on site and have this type of discussion, then I would make that type of recommendation. Um, so I think the community outreach process, I think I would just somewhat sit, without kind of punting on your question, mm -hmm. just say whatever you, we think will get the most kind of bang for your buck. Realize, mm -hmm. it, you know, that, and, and so like I said, whether that's something on site or at a farmer's market or some sort of hybrid, um, it, it, it's, it's kind of flexible. I think um, in terms of changes to these elements to um, reflect the discussion that's being had at present, um, yeah, we can, we can help with that, um, you know, in terms of, of, of the, some of the imagery that, you know, can, can 
uh, be a little bit more developed and, 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 and showcase more of a, of a kind of a natural kind of look um, to, to a park, we can you know, kind of substitute those absolutely if that's kind of okay. what you think would be more in line with where the design wants to head. Any recommendations from the committee? I mean, I think we heard a lot about maybe some natural areas in there. Or, yeah, and or Eric suggested climbing boulders, not a place set. Yeah, I think that we had talked about that too when we were together, and I think the committee in general always leaned that way of like, we don't want things that are going to dis destroy or distract from your view of the mountains and the neighborhood. We want it to like blend in and be. Um, supporting what Livingston stands for um, and so like a play area on that bubble doesn't mean a play structure it could mean like a bunch of rocks and logs for kids to run around and jump off of and whatnot um, so yeah. and I, I like your points that there's a lot of open space you know that's utilized back there um, mm -hmm. I walk my dog back there I ride my bike back there we run back there mm -hmm. but it's private land and so I'm wondering, you know, that, you know, Windy Ridge, LLC, and uh, Pocock, and, you know, Chapman's, is there is a corridor of city right away, but a lot of the trails and networks that exist there now are private. So what happens when those developments happen and we lose, we lose all that public space? That's what's now public. And I don't know if anybody's picking up their dog poop over there either. Do you have recommendations for her? Yeah, sorry. Um, sorry. You could take the money you're going to spend on all of this development and buy a big chunk of that property up there. I wish we had. I wish. Yeah, Fifty thousand dollars. It was us. comparable. Eric, do you have enough to like? I mean, I would like to see something that um, maybe reflects the interest in a little bit more natural area. If I could comment. It's not going to be a compromise to beautify a third of it and then chain link fence the other. Yeah. And chain link we're fence. not doing a chain We don't want a chain link fence either. What kind of fence are you doing? Uh, right now, looking at dog parks and recommendations from Spurline, they recommended a four foot, um, it's, it's, the, it's very similar to the fence that's along the highway with wood posts. It's really good for drifting snow. It's very sturdy, but it also prevents like people's view from being uh, um, obscured. Um, so there's so is it like a split rail fence. No, no. no. It's 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 wired going up, and it's um, closer along the bottom than at the top. And and please understand, we're starting from the standpoint that the 2012 master plan these are the components that were recommended in that so almost 10 years ago and as Sarah said we have gotten repeated requests for a fenced dog park in Livingston and, and put one in somewhere that's not a that's well the there's I know there's come and deal with me who's going to police this us police there will be people there if you, if you see the park 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. there will be people there late there will be people there early yelling at their dogs. So what we do over here, we deal with all of that. We deal with the, the lack of people picking up after their own dogs. This is not a place for a dog park. Appreciate that comment. Appreciate do you have a recommendation that. for where one should be? Anywhere but where we're at. Do you have a recommendation? There's BLM State Sarah. Ground over on Harvard's Flats. Why don't we go over there? BLM land? BLM their state and their the city. There's city and county over there too. The city just, uh, as I read in the paper, just acquired a chunk of property. I'm sorry. Am I, am I, I'm sorry. Are you smirking? I'm not sure if I said something that was funny. No, I just said I'm sorry that cause I'm I'm perpetuating the conversation, and we're at such an early stage in this project that I would we're we're getting ahead of I ourselves. Would, I, I would I understand. I just would recommend that facial, you know. I apologize. Like works on that. I not apologize. Not a way to start a functioning relationship with the neighbors of this park. Thank you. So at the, this point, uh, I just want to ask Eric: Do you have enough that you can go forward with something? And how soon could we go forward to like a a farmers market or up at Reservoir to meet with neighbors with ideas for the park? You've heard some input today. 
Right. I mean, I guess my thought was we were going to use these diagrams for that purpose, I guess, okay. um, because that way everyone's evaluating it from, because if we iterate now off of uh, uh, two people and, and three committee members, I feel like you've suddenly shortchanged anyone right. else that in this in the process and then in, the, in that dialogue to understand where the breadth of opinion lies. Mm -hmm. So I, I would suggest that going having events and everyone's kind of seeing the same information and and presenting at an equal basis would be my recommendation. And then once all that information is collected, we, we digest it and figure out how you know what the how to progress the the the, the the, the park in a manner that that is is, is listening to all of these these comments, I guess. Could you in the images add something that reflects? Absolutely. Yeah. That would be my recommendation. Okay. Okay. Any other comments from the committee? And when do you um, when would you suggest we go forward? And I guess part of this depends on the committee. Um, because someone needs to be part of these meetings at the farmers markets. Um, I did ask Rachel and Clay. I didn't hear back from Clay. Rachel can participate up at Reservoir. Can't participate at farmers market because she's doing farms to school. So the question is, when would somebody else be available to go to the farmers market and work on with these images? Do we have to give you a date right now? Well, we can't. Go, we're not meeting in July. <laughs> okay. So I'm around. Yeah, I'm, I'm mostly around too. Eric, yeah, do you have a suggestion? Thirtieth or seventh? Um, I, I would say the sooner the better, in a way, to capitalize and try to, um, you know, uh, keep the conversation uh, fresh and and mm -hmm. moving forward. Um, I think it, otherwise it might yeah, get. I think yeah. Why don't we start with the thirtieth? That's so next week. We, we from today. Yeah, mm -hmm. at the farmers market, um, the city commission has a table, so mm -hmm. we'll see about adding on there. And can you have those maps? And so we, yeah, we've got the three um, kind of uh, bubble diagrams that were shown. Um, we've got those, and I guess my thought is we would have these three plus. I, I, I think we'll have just a third board of images. Probably we would have those three, and um, uh, I, I think use those as a starting okay. point for for. Kind of that. And then we can find a time to do Reservoir Park when you have time and Rachel has time. Right. Sooner rather than later. Okay. Anything else that you need on this right now? Thanks for all your work. Thank you. So yeah, much. appreciate your time yeah. on this, Thank Eric. You, Eric. Thank you. Appreciate that. So we're all set with this for now? We'll be at the farmer's market next week to take mm -hmm. public comment. Doesn't mean we won't be at another one, but we'll start there. Okay, great. Thank you. And thank you for coming and letting us know. Hopefully, all this will get improved because of your input. So thank you. What day are you going to be at the farmer's market? Did I hear? Uh, the 30th. 30th. One week from next today. week. Okay. And we'll try to tag on to the city commission's table because I think they're there every week. So, great. Thank you. Okay, our next um, agenda item is the, uh, I'm moving up the public comment section so that we can hear a discussion about uh, Green Acres and Park. Craig, I think you had contacted me a couple years ago just as the discussion was starting about annexing Green Acres that you at some point were going to want to talk with us because you have a big park there you care very deeply about. So, Hi, my name is Craig Carlson. And I've been a resident of Green Acres since 1978. The park was started in 1981, and it's been kind of a neighborhood park uh, this whole time. Mary Jo Barrett is here with me, too. She started a process of trying to get more playground equipment two or three years ago, and was working with the county, and we didn't realize that we were going to be at next at the time. So Mary Jo is still very much interested in trying to work and raise funds to improve the park. Um, we just kind of wanted to introduce ourselves to you and know, let you know that we are interested in the park and interested in volunteering and maybe getting the community back into volunteering. The community has really changed over the past couple of years. There used to be a lot of older people now. Now we've got younger people again and kids and 
uh, kind of limited on playground equipment. And we'd like to just try and improve it. We, over the years, we've had some really good county commissioners that have helped us keep that park up. Recently, we've had problems with trees dying and playground equipment removed and not replaced. And we just like to keep a positive thing going with Green Acres Park. Um, both of us have kids that have grown grown up there and gone, but um, we got grandkids down there growing <laughs> up in that park. So we just like to introduce ourselves to you and say, look, you know what we can do um, as far as keeping Green Acres Park. And, and I guess we've got questions too. If uh, we're going to get some signs out there for as far as hours, we've got hours as far as the county's concerned. Um, what this, what the board or the city plans on doing as far as dogs? Uh, we've got the lawn more lady 20 years ago put up no dog signs out there, but there is no ordinance per se. But she was getting tired of mowing up all the dog poop, so she put out signs. So, but there is no law that's enforceable to limit the dogs or that's interesting. but as far as what the city has for parks as far as curfews and and uh, dogs and um, so forth is there a bathroom I don't know there, there is no right. bathroom no. and over the years there's been talk of a bathroom but we don't have the sewer yet there's been talk of a vault toilet um, we've had a porta potty and this blows over every year because of the wind yeah. do you have recommendations on hours or dogs that you we had ordinance put into place i think it's ordinance eight or nine or nine and ten of the county as far as the curfew and i think it's like from seven in the morning or six in the morning to ten at night, night. Uh, we were getting a lot of destruction out there um after ten o'clock kids were coming out there and kicking over sprinkler heads and such so we did get a curfew, and we've got a speed limit per se because we have no sidewalks out there. But that is in ordinance with the county. But the speed limits are kind of hidden behind trees, so yeah. I'd like to have them visible. Uh, there's no real kids running warning signs or anything out there. Um, so we'd like to talk about signage. We'd like to talk about curfew. Um, the, the dog park issue per se. Um, what would you, what's your recommendation on dog use, and, and what's the current dog use of the area? Uh, there's nothing in writing as far as the So people use it. Pe they the can dogs use it. use it. But there is a sign on the gates that say, no dogs allowed. Oh. Because we were worried, I mean, the lady with, that was mowing the lawn for the county yeah. put those up. But we are worried about dogs with kids, and uh, we'd like to maybe see something. My recommendation, I don't speak for the whole community, is something like the city's got Sacagawea Park or G Street Park on, or, leash. on a leash yeah. and pick up after And pick yourself. up after. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Because, um, and I, I can check and see whether there's a default um, curfew for parks. Some of them are sunset or 10 mm -hmm. o'clock or whatever. Um, and also on the dogs, we have designated off-leash dog areas. But the default is your dog's on a leash. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a few off-leash dog areas, but... I would recommend dogs on a leash because some people come out there with dogs that, oh, this dog's not vicious. And the next time, mm -hmm. thing you see is chasing a kid. Mm -hmm. and, and we'd like to make the park more kid-friendly. I, I mean, we, we love dogs, and everybody out there has got dogs. Uh, but uh, I think... Over we went through a stage where we had hardly any kids. But this last year, I counted 20 kids getting on the school bus there. Wow. And just last two months in my neighborhood, there has been 11 new little kids moving into just my block. And so there was a lot more little kids coming in out there. Sure. And what we don't need is dogs running loose in the park. And, uh, and the majority of the people are very good. They do keep their ki dogs on the leash and they walk around. But it's just a few that think that they've used this park as their own personal dog park. And they don't pick up, they don't put them on leash. So we can get clarification from Shannon on curfew and mm -hmm. the default on the dog use. Mm -hmm. Is there, what, what would you recommend would be the best way for this committee to forward a recommendation that's broadly supported to this city 
either public works or city commission on green acres? I mean, should we just invite public comment uh, or what? I mean, I, I, I would like to let people discuss it. I know what I'd like, okay. but I think it would be better for the, I mean, the community has changed since in the 42 years I've lived out there. Yeah. Uh, people are different, dog ideas, different kid ideas. Um, There's a lot more dogs than there used to be. COVID brought in a lot of people with dogs. Because of the street roam, it's like country, it's like kind of country, mm -hmm. and they could just bring their dogs in there. We get a lot of city people that come out we and do. use the park, and so it's, um, I, I think it needs to be discussed as far as curfew and dog. Leashes. I don't know if the city's going to change our speed limits out there um, from the 15 mile an hour, which we have because of the park and no, no uh, sidewalks that we implemented years and years ago. Um, the toilet thing is something we'd like to discuss and, and where its location is so it doesn't affect neighbors or how it's put in or whatever. Um, and I don't know what the city's planning when they do our sewers and our water line improvements, if, if it's going to be able to have a sewer toilet. Um, I don't know what Shannon's planning, um, and I don't know what, I, I'd like to see, I guess, my recommendation is see like a five-year plan on playground equipment and maybe replacing the trees that died because of the guy that was mowing the park, ringed around with a weed eater and killed a bunch of them. Um, so we'd like to see maybe some tree replacement, um, but we'd like to help. I, I mean. Uh, the you park, don't have a homeowners association that not we, we abolished we it because all it was for was the water main or the water line that yeah. we owned privately to draw fees and such. Um, but no, we'd like to help and contribute what we can to. When the park was first built, it was Green Acres had put in so many hours. The residents had put in so many hours, and the county would put in the money. Um, and we planted the trees and we assembled the playground equipment. Um, we had three different Eagle Scout projects out there. Uh, we did various things as far as volunteering and, mm -hmm. and keeping the park up. It's a beautiful park. It's well, a cool park. I think people we could have a lot of volunteers again. I think if we had playground equipment or structures that need to be built, I think we would have volunteers that would be more than willing to help put the park back together. And Mary Jo has already done a couple fundraisers. We've got a little bit of money. My, yeah, we've we got, uh, my granddaughters and I, for the last mm -hmm. five years, have done lemonade stamps and cookie stamps. Yeah. And uh, they have $1,000 wow. towards playground equipment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Mary Jo even had a fundraiser that was going to go on at the Catabatic. Yeah, the Catabatic. Catabatic. But then the annexation yeah, just yeah. threw everything into a... So right now we're just... Trying to pick ourselves back up and, and communicate with you guys and see what we can do and well and, and um, so there's a few things we can do right away but one would be to get clarification from the city on some of those issues um, we would it would be helpful if you if we could figure out what to prioritize for recommendations mm -hmm. and our next meeting is going to be in August we don't meet in July. Um, that gives you a couple months to mm -hmm. also talk to your neighbors and maybe come ready to submit some recommendations. We could announce that we're having a meeting and invite the public to come as well mm -hmm. um, and do that and then start looking at what are some of the prioritized recommendations for Green Acres Park. Now my understanding is that a gazebo is in the budget for this coming year mm -hmm. for Green Acres Park. We had. We, we heard wind of that, but we hadn't heard the details. Well, it hasn't been finalized. Okay. The city commission still mm -hmm. has to um, approve the whole budget, mm -hmm. but it's in there right now, mm -hmm. and then a drinking fountain for next year, mm -hmm. like a year and a half from now or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, I mean, you'll have to decide if there's other priorities you yeah. want. Well, the bathroom would be the main priority. It doesn't do any good to bring more people into the park if there's no place to relieve themselves. Right now they use bushes mm -hmm. and the old shed. Okay. So until, yeah, until, until we know... Until we get we, sewer, we really yeah. can't get a bathroom. Until we know what Shannon or the city manager want as far as... What we want to hear from them. I don't know what they're required as far as state law for a toilet facility now that it's a city park. I don't know if there's 
things there's that they've none. got to work. There is none. I mean, that, that we're just putting in, for example, a vault toilet at Myers Riverview Trail. Mm -hmm. So that's going in. Um, and then we're hoping to have one at Reservoir Park if mm -hmm. that goes forward. Um, so it's a matter of where are the priorities. Mm -hmm. You're out there. You don't, it's not like you have an easy one to get to elsewhere. And you have, I know Derek used to go play soccer there. So, um, <laughs> yes. Well, it's a pretty established park. I mean, it's got, yeah. it's got a lot of things going for it. It's just that when they took out everything except for one structure. And my idea, long time ago, excuse me for buttoning in, oh. I would like to approach it as an all abilities park. Oh. Mm -hmm. I think it would be fantastic to make it a park that everybody of any ability can play there. Mm -hmm. I know the, I've done research every town I go to that has one I take pictures of. And there's so many things that our park is big and it's beautiful and it could be a fantastic all abilities park. And I think there's grant money and stuff out there. I don't know, but I would think there would be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a cool idea. Yeah. yeah. like that. There's things out there that need to be done. The, the shed out there now doesn't have a roof. I mean, the tie, the, but if, why replace the roof if you're going to put in a new toilet in a year? Or, mm -hmm. I mean, we need to just, we just want to discuss and we can bring to you what we need. And, but it's up to you, I think, to prioritize. Well, we, what we do is make recommendations mm -hmm. okay. um, based on what we're hearing from the public. Um, so we make recommendations to either the city or the city commission. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to hear from you mm -hmm. and more people, just like we're doing on Reservoir, going out to the public. So we're happy to have a meeting like in August or mm -hmm. whenever we're ready to ask the public for more comment. And that would give you guys time to see what yeah. you're hearing there, to prioritize your, what you're wanting. I have a list of, is that my husband's list of things that people have written down, what they would like to see in the park. Oh, good, okay. okay. But this was before the city took over. So I think some of the things that stay the same because it's the same people. Okay. But I could uh, Do you have questions? Yeah, so I, just, I, would, I would just suggest to dream big. Yeah, you know. Oh, I am. Yeah. So don't be afraid to dream big because it always comes down a little bit. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't mean we can't eventually get get there. You know, it really like your your will and your volunteerism. Um, it's just such a contrast to you know with Reservoir Park or with Green Acres Park when you have people who are like let's build let's put in trees and we're gonna do the work and um, it's a much easier recipe to deal with. Yeah, and work with work with. Okay. Well, we'll try to prioritize yeah. because we've got to go around and get addresses from everybody for the sewer project and our emails, and we'll talk with yeah. people. We're going to go neighborhood door to door, and okay. so we'll do that. Um, are there questions for the committee first? I just have more question. Is are the are the basketball courts and the baseball field utilized yes. at the moment? Over the last well forty years, yes and no. Um, I mean, when they built the new soccer field. Everybody went there. We we were using that. They were using t-ball and soccer and everything to practice in that field. Um, but they still do. They still, still have. Do. They still have and baseball and t-ball there. Okay. And uh, not so much soccer, but uh, they okay. did have. Okay. Other questions from the committee? Thank you. I just no. don't want the baseball field to turn into a dog park. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was. I was, I guess my question was kind of like, is it worth you know if, if the basketball court gets to a place where it needs to be resurfaced, is you know is that something? Is something to think about? Like, is it worth maintaining it's or is it? The worth concrete maintaining? on the basketball surface is 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 real good. I used to paint it once a year and I I quit, okay. but it should be painted maybe the lines striped once in a while. Um, Okay. Maybe we need to, like I say, we need to discuss the, the curfews out there, maybe signs and stuff. Or um, We'll get clarification on that and yeah. get back okay. to you on it. And maybe we could even have the signs closer to the park so people can see it's 15. It should, it should be automatically known, but people don't. They, they zoom by my house sometimes 30 miles an hour. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Anything else from the committee? Okay. Does that sound like a plan to move forward? Yeah. Is that helpful? Uh, we're here, and, okay. and if you want us to do something different, call us, and okay. we're willing to 
do what we need to do. We'll give you, obviously, advance if this is on the August agenda, so you have plenty of advance to do it, but hopefully you'll be able to get some feedback over the next few months and see what people think and make sure we're all hearing that. Okay. Okay. We're just glad to see someone's willing to help us with the part. Oh, sure. Like it. Wonderful. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, so would it be possible to have a meeting of our committee out? Oh, yeah. So that more yeah. people could yeah. come? Yeah, we could yeah. definitely go out there. Yeah, you know, just like we did at Mayor's Landing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so old business. Um, I don't think this will take very long, but Mayor's Landing, um, you all got the copy of the Mayor's Landing letter. Um, the only follow-up I have is that I've reached out to Chris King, who had said she could help fundraise for the fence. Um, if you haven't been out there, the rodeo station already put a fence in at the back of the roping arena. So the fence we would be looking at would connect to those two ends and go around the wooded area. So we're looking. So, so that's all closed in now? Like well, it's the old fence around the roping arena and a new fence along the back. Okay, but I guess, yeah, so like some dilapidated fence and some complete fence, but it's, yeah, all, but it's, it's, separates, all, it's all there now. <laughs> but it separates the wooded area, which is yep. sort of open to the dog park yep. from the parking cool. area. So because they'll be using it this... Right, like next week. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. already been... So I'm working with Chris King. She's just said it's likely to be a little bit later because it's summer. So trying to get all those people back who'd already committed to help fundraise, but we're looking at fundraising to help with the fence, um, and we'll go from there. So, um, and I don't have a, I don't have a report on the E. coli, which was the other thing we had asked about. They just haven't had a chance to go back in and test that. So, um, the North Town. So you also had a letter in your packet about. A letter to Northtown. We had, remember, asked the developer to meet with us in October. He originally agreed, but then the snowstorm came, that late free October snowstorm. Um, so I went back to him. The issue right now is that that development has already occurred. He's already dedicated some parkland. There will be further proposals for other phases of that. That is the time to say, this is where we want the trail. This is the trail system we're working on. So the suggestion I've got is let's make sure the planning board knows that we want that trail considered. Because I don't really feel like the, the consultation with the committee occurred that was supposed to occur under phase one. So that's the reason for the letter to the planning board. It does not replace the need for us to go before the planning board where they're, when they're considering the next plaque. We have to let them know what we're trying to do in big picture. So I need, we need, we do need to get approval on that um, if you want to do that. Just one question. Um, mm -hmm. The dog park, maybe, you know, being a solution in the roping arena, is there any, do we have to ask Fair and Park Board, or it would be the Rodeo Association, I guess. Who's Are you back on Mayor's Landing? I am, sorry. Okay. I'm going back. I'm just thinking about the dog park yeah. being in that area. Has there been any further discussion with any other parties that would... It's all city land. Right, but it, for I guess for that week, so the city could say yes, and they can use it for anything else. No, we, we have not, as a committee, made any more recommendations than what was in that letter. Okay. If we yeah. want to go back, and we haven't, in fact, the Livingston Bike Club never submitted their proposal. He was going to email that digitally. Uh, oh dear. Remember he handed me something and yeah. said he would send it to, right. to us? Right. So the committee really can't go forward with making more recommendations about the use of that, the larger use of that area yet. Mm -hmm. But we certainly could do that at any time. Okay. So all we're talking about here is just the But we can revisit any time. I, and in the letter, you'll notice the one place we veered off of that particular area was just the request for soil to cover the glass right. at mm -hmm. Mayor's Landing. So, so anything on the North Town or North Side letter to, to the Planning Board? It's really the whole North Side to alert the Planning Board that we're looking at a whole trail system. 
and we want we want them to consider that because our position is only recommendations. Right. Advisory. Yeah. It'd be nice to get to a point where we don't have to read every agenda to know that there's a opportunity we're going to miss or lose. No. The opportunity for trails, parklands. What do you want to do with the letter? Do you want to send it? Yeah. I, I mean, I helped write it, so can I still make a motion? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all volunteers here. Selfishly there. motions to approve okay. this letter. Yeah, a motion to approve. Yeah. Second? I'll I'll second, I'll that. second. Go ahead. Connor, um, any changes to it, or did you all read it? I read it last week. Yeah, I read your draft. So, okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we'll send that to the plan. It's simply to remind them that we're looking at a trail system on the north side, so when they're considering development, keep those needs in mind, So because you can't go backwards. Um, nothing on the skate park ranger station. The letter got sent. Growth policy, they passed it. We sent the letter. Thanks, Sarah, for drafting that. Um, on the HRDC easement, um, I asked, we sent the letter to the um, Public Works. There's, we haven't seen progress yet. I think everybody's just overwhelmed. They're still trying to get seasonals on board. So they are aware of that proposal. We'll have to follow up with that. I don't know if there's, Clay had any no way updates, but we'll check with him next time. Um, trails and AT plan. Do you have the dates for that? I do. So, over 300 responses from the survey. Good. So, thanks for sharing that if you did that or for commenting. Um, they've come up with some preliminary projects and the first three chapters, so we're just starting to work through those phases. The next meeting for the public is July 29th. It is an in-person meeting as, as they explain it and it's a drop-in public input session. Um, maybe the Civic Center, TBC, TBC, sorry, and it's from 5.30 to 7. And I think that's just to get some, I don't understand exactly what they're going to be presenting. I think it's similar to the format they used for the growth policy where they had different things up and you could go to stations and say what you thought. Or they might have the project list yeah. up. Um, and then there's a Looking Glass Academy for decision makers, leaders that they've sent out to county commission, city commission, steering committee. Uh, I put forward uh, probably 10 other names to include like Kristen Galbraith, to include Shannon Holmes, um, and some other people like Inman that might be interested. It's a one and a half day workshop where they take us through different scenarios looking from accessibility and all sorts of different scenarios so that um, we're more aligned in implementing the plan. And so they'll go through that with us too and prioritization. On the 31st of July is the community bike ride. It's from 9 a.m. to noon. Uh, they're gonna showcase some of the high priority projects, some of the planned themes. Um, they'll have five or six stations. They'll talk about project health, economic development, like land use policy, etc. I assume that the crossing will be on there because um, I don't know if anybody was at the meeting or listened to the meeting. I was at the meeting, so you wouldn't have been at the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, that they really utilize the growth policy to um, elevate the desires of future development and that a crossing over on Highway 10 would actually be contradictory to the wants and needs of the community vision. Mm -hmm. um, and then that led into, you know, how do you still come up with solutions and um, access transportation and trails and other modal mobility um, really came to the surface. And so how do we come up with those solutions? And um, so I'm gonna just try to push and say, use our consultants because we're going through that process right now and they can help us figure a lot of those out. Uh, so that was quite exciting. Yeah, nice then, timing. Nice timing with the growth policy for that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> really and the, uh, the commission did wait to make a decision until the growth policy was complete. Cool. cool. Good. Good. So that they could engage with us, and it was a really amazing thing to witness what that tool can do to make huge decisions like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It was really exciting. 
to hear Michael Carter's talk about ingenuity and um, like talking about school bus routes and making Washington Elementary maybe more diverse with different grades so less people are crossing the tracks and mm -hmm. there was a lot of things mentioned. Wow. It was pretty neat. Um, that's all the dates for that. So they're still on track to try to come out with something by the end of August or September. Um, so we're still moving pretty quickly. Okay. Good. Cool. Um, this will be, the only other public process will be the draft. If right. you don't go to the bike ride. Yeah. So this is it. Bike ride. Draft. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You said July 31st. July so Sackett Park, um, yeah, at its meeting, I think they still did. It was on the agenda and I talked to County Commissioner Caldwell about it. They had Sackett Park on the agenda. It, the whole issue is the MOU that the county was trying to negotiate with the developer where um, there was some encroachment on county roads. That area has the roads themselves, not the properties, has been annexed by the city. So now if the city wants to pursue any issue about encroachment, it has to be the city negotiating an MOU. The county is pretty much out of it, is mm -hmm. one thing. So at the meeting last week, or I think it was last week, I don't know if it's coming up, the county, their position is we don't have a role in this anymore as far as the streets go because the city has annexed it. And then we, the city, we're assuming the city owns Sackett Park. Um, yeah, no so, proof, but we, we have. Well, it's on the cadastral that way. That's the assumptions. And um, so anything we do in the future on Sackett Park, we're, we're dealing with the city. Cool. So. Fun fact, where does the name Sackett come from? It's a surveyor. It's named Sackett. Interesting. I like that. Um, so second we have park improvements. I put this on there. Maybe we'll reserve it for the future. But um, during the last week or two on social media, there was um, there were several comments about the need to replace some of the equipment in Sackett Park and improve uh, Pomp's playground. Secretary of Park. Secretary of Park. Yeah. Um, so we need. I just would like this on our radar just to figure out what to do about and I think you had said that maybe there's some entities willing to partner to do something. We got a lot on our plate right now, but I just would love to see us look at that down the road, especially because I think Land and Water Conservation Fund is a great source of funding for that. It's been used in the past and we might be able to make some improvements there. Did you ever have a conversation with Eric about his meeting with the park planner guy? happened there that I happened to walk into and participate in for 15 minutes I can't remember what was that uh, I was just had I had took the boys to Sacagawea and I listened to Eric and some park planner guy who had been part of the creation of the park 20 years ago um, talk about improvements and this guy like walked Eric through everything got on top of the structures was like these look good this could be replaced here's like what I would do if I were you know to redo it okay and so Eric even he even mentioned like he thought somebody from Parks and Trails was going to be there, but I don't think we were ever told about it, or if it was, it went to spam or something. But um, so he's having a conversation with one of the guys who's originally part of the project. And well, and there is something in the that. capital projects budget okay. for a swing set for this year. Okay, but I'm not sure that addresses this Pomp's playground and everything. So we right. probably need to sit down with Eric. Yeah, I think that'd be a and good just idea. just see what they have in mind and how we can help. Yeah, and, and I'm sure that conversation was t three times as long as I was a part of it, you know. Um, and there's but a lot it sounded of positive, and yeah. they wanted to move forward. Yeah, Eric was definitely up on, like, very excited about the, what he was saying and definitely was, like, in agreement with the improvements. And the guy was also super encouraging about how, in, how good of condition it is for the most part. And it just like it needs nice. maintenance, but it doesn't need like overhauling necessarily. You know, oh, good. And just some improvements of structures in terms of like bringing them, making them safer, or bringing them up to you know twenty years later technology. But for the most part, it's like the woods in great shape, like the bones are all are all pretty solid. So oh, good. Cool. That was That's good. good to hear. So maybe we can revisit that at some point. Um, social media was this something somebody 
Oh, it's me. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the social media king. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Um, <laughs> oh, wait. So, I, you told me, you, you kind of gave me the rundown of what you did, what you do for like meeting notices. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Who I send the meeting notices to? Yep, and that was very comprehensive. I have no improvements there for you. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I think the last meeting, you know, it's just kind of interesting to hear that lady give um, her feedback and say, like, Okay, it's on, we put something on social media. Well, I'm not on social media where I get it. Well, we put it up here, here, here. You know, it's just like, how do we make, you know, how do we use some of these channels in, in ways that maybe we aren't? Or how do we, you know, just be consistent with some of the things we do um, outside of social media? But I don't have any great ideas there. Outside of, in terms of social media, I would love to, um, I, I don't know who, who has the ability to post. Do we know? Uh, everybody but you. Well, that's because I don't Facebook. Is it would it be acceptable to allow my wife's profile to be a poster, or is that uh, against things? The city doesn't have their policy yet. It's just we have a policy about what. I mean, we're appointed by the city, so we're right. basically. So we follow. Yeah, Face said we follow all their rules, yeah. right? Um, so I'm happy to if like my. I'm not going to create a Facebook account just to do this because I just don't like social media. But would love to do my like if my wife can get set up with access on her account, I would I have access to that. Uh, and I could run, I could just take point on running posts and be the the poster to social media. Um, I'm thinking every month, the beginning of the month, I would just do a call to everybody, say like, hey, for the month of July, yeah. you know, you, we all have different areas of ownership for different things, and not everybody knows what's going on with the Northside Trails or with the active transportation plan. Not everybody knows what's going on with the Reservoir Park or is in the loop, so I would just make a call first of the month or ish and say, hey, for all your projects, you know, like, what social media posts could we, you know, could you just provide one or or two posts for the things you're working on or what's coming up and then I can just kind of I don't want to have this not be owned by anybody because I'm like if, or if like three people are like yeah I can post I can post I can post then nobody's going to post or it's not going to be consistent so we should make sure that in the next few days we post about being at farmer's market yep um, about with with some images and idea maps of reservoir park Yes. So let's get something like that up, and we could, down the line, post about Green Acres Park. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we just have to be. I just want to be careful about how we word it, so we're not promising anyone that we have all the money <laughs> right. to do everything they want to do, but that we want parks to be responsive to the community. Yep. So. Yeah. So that's. I, I'm happy to take suggestions that you have, you know, for I don't, like that would be a fantastic call I'd say, hey, at some point we should you know, okay. do something about Green Acres and yeah. I can just sort of be the the record keeper, I guess, you know. Lydia, since you're here, <laughs> what is the best way for this committee to get information in the enterprise? I mean, we send out press releases and sometimes those are taken sort of verbatim or mixed and stuff and but we have you know what what improves our chances of getting information about things like reservoir park or green acres or events we're doing well there were a few staff changes recently so i, I know thank you for using for a minute i will be covering city so anything to do with the city is me uh jason does county Okay. Anything. I don't know if you guys do anything with the county. Um, well, we we do some partnership things with like fairgrounds and parks, or like Sackett Park for a while involved the county. Now it doesn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those could go anything county to him. Um, yeah, I'm probably your best contact there. Okay. If you guys ever want to advertise, I mean that's the advertising department. Um, we put stuff in the legal notices because we're required to, but. That's, that's about it. Yeah, I mean, that's probably your best okay. way of doing it. Okay. Anything in the immediate term for Connor for social media? And Allison, do you want to write up the blurb for Reservoir Park at the uh, Farmer's Market? 
Well, I'm feeling a little like no one wants this up there. Well, this is for the farmer's market. This is for general feedback from other people. Mm -hmm. The rest of the city. Um, yeah, sure. Which, yeah. This is simply inviting people. Yeah, to I'm just saying that we're going to be at the city commission table at the farmer's market. Well, I haven't confirmed that we can be at the, I don't know what yeah. else. Yeah, can you do. confirm that before? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. before we just We'll just be standing in the corner of yeah. the farmer's market. I'll check with Faith. Yes. Hey, yeah, I'll check with Faith. I don't want to set up a whole new table or whatever. I mean, we'll yeah. figure it out, but I'll... Ask her if we can. I mean, we're part of the city, so. Oh yeah, I imagine that'd be fine. Okay. If you just want to write up the thing, and if you don't want to, I can do it. I'm just trying to keep the lead with you. So I, I just know. This is what we... <gasps> Okay. Sounds good. A post about AmeriCorps could happen, mm. and all the cleanups that they did in the parks. Oh, that would be super cool. Do we have pictures of that? And like. I have tons yeah. of pictures. Could and we? Awesome. Can they do like how how much great. longer are they here? I see them everywhere, by the way. I do. Like, I'm oh, constantly seeing because they always have their little AmeriCorps badges out, yeah. and it's like, cool. and it's like, look at those guys. Yeah. yeah, this is awesome. So, how long are they here for? They're here until the 29th of this month. Yes, like oh, like six Tuesday? days. Yeah, they're, they're here oh. five weeks. Oh, bummer. I thought it was like a summer thing. Uh, yeah. I was gonna say we could like a... introduce them all on social yeah. media and say like oh. give them a shout out. But. Can you get a? I mean, we could do a press release on it, especially if you could get a quote from Shannon or Eric about how helpful they've been given the... I did get an email from them. The problem, well, given the difficulty in hiring seasonal staff, how important this year those people were. And if you have an email from them where they've said something like that, I would say just incorporate that into a press release and send it to them and make sure they're okay with it. I always run our press releases by them first since they're city. Okay. I, we did send a press release to the Enterprise last week. About? About AmeriCorps just being here. So oh. it wasn't city specific. Oh. But I could try, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're busy. We're, we've got a lot on our place right now, but I'm trying to get our intern to write a piece on it. Okay. What about a photo? They've got lots of photos. They gave us a lot of okay. Um, but could we? I think if you want, if you wanted, I don't know. Maybe your feedback. We could put a city spin on it, or like more input around the city, just because of the lack of seasonal workers, as Jean was saying, and how valuable they were. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. I, I actually just made a note. So oh, great. We got that press release to great to try and get someone on that if I couldn't. Okay, and they can just call me or call Shannon or call Eric, I guess. Yeah. Call me. Great. Yeah. And then you can still do social media. Then. Yes. On that note of seasonal workers, um, we posted the job advertisement. Jean found it yeah. from Lisa. The link still isn't working. I know. To find yeah. and the job spec on the website. I flagged it to her. I don't think it's changed yet. Um, we received two applications. That were different than two applications she received, so it helped. And we forwarded cool. those to Lisa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. So that's good. We did. We did our work. So great. Yeah. So that's you've like got three. Pretty cool, actually. You've got three at least social media coming up in the next couple of weeks. So good. That's exciting. Um, planning options will wait. We're not meeting in July. Mm -hmm. Okay. So our next meeting next month. is August. Too many people are gone. Um, and then um, I do want to pass along that Yellowstone Gateway Museum is looking for volunteers. If anyone is interested in conducting their walking tours, they do them Tuesdays at 7 o'clock starting July 8th through September 9th. One is the West Side Historic District Tour. Um, they go around 30 homes and businesses. It's one and a half to two hours. The other one is Ghosts and Ghost Signs. And they have all the material. They're just looking for people to take these, this material and guide people around town, and they're very much looking for volunteers. Mm -hmm. I was at the museum because the material that Patricia Grabo gave us, remember, last year mm -hmm. from on Bozeman Trail, you know, I'd gone through it, and um, 
I finally gave it to Gilstone Gateway Museum to hold on to so there would be public access to it. Anytime we want to go access it, we can. Um, and I let Patricia know. I'm not comfortable me keeping it because it should be open to the public. So, Should we make those tours a social media post or is that too public? Well, exactly. you could ca you could go you could probably go on to the Yellowstone Gateway Museum and, and share, it, share it. They have one, yeah. yeah. Um, but this is them looking for guides, volunteers to conduct the tours. Yeah, I think I saw it on Facebook. We yeah. So if you know anyone who yeah. would be interested, this is this is volunteer, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. For Yellowstone Gateway. But if you know someone, and yeah. you don't have to do all the tours, yeah, it's just to help fill in. So it might just be a couple times, but they're just looking for volunteers. I do that ghost one. So that's, I think that's everything on our agenda. I have a public comment from Nicole Cardo. Oh, okay. She um, had an idea because she was seeing a lot of thoughts on spraying and mosquito issues. Mm. And she said that they lived in a town in Minnesota that put up bat houses in the parks to encourage bats to come into town. She said it kind of backfired, so it does take some research because people, a bunch of people put that bat houses in their house, in their like in the neighborhoods, and then bats started proliferating mm -hmm. profusely yeah. and then housing in people's homes. So we do wanna, she said, please do research and just take it as an idea, but she said that the mosquito population drastically dropped and they didn't have to spray anymore. Can we give that to Clay? <laughs> so it is yeah. on Clay's plate. So Clay, yeah. So Clay and I yeah. are, we've been seeing the, the Facebook activity. Mm -hmm. And so we had a couple conversations around what are our next steps. And he's reaching out to um, some researchers to get some real research about West Nile, the real impacts. Um, we thought the best thing to do now would be to um, make sure that the community is informed as possible. So. What are they spraying? What are the impacts of what they're spraying? And we're focused on parks and trails. Focus on parks Starting. and trails. <laughs> Obviously it goes outside from there, but. Right, and how, like, so how does it, do we have fish in our parks and trails? We do along the levee, so we could say the fish along the levee. Yeah. Uh -huh. and so what is the bigger impact to humans, other species? And then um, gathering people that are interested in staying informed, and then make a decision from there. Cool, so I like that. that. Yeah. But if you're interested, yeah, join us. <laughs> Our cabin was once a bat house. It wasn't great. Okay. No. Um, okay, so if you haven't looked at the um, five year capital project summary, you should look at it. Um, it is on the city website. Um, it's not under documents, it's under the budget mm -hmm. stuff. But look at that because that gives you a sense of where some of the funding requests are going for this year and in the future. And at some point, we'll ask Shannon to meet us maybe and explain exactly what they're doing. I did ask if they have those more detailed explanations of what these items are, but I haven't heard that. So what was your title of that? It's the five-year capital project summary. Okay, thank you. And I can find the link and send it to you um, if you want on the city website. Yeah, so if you would, I would appreciate that. Yeah. Willowberry, because we're not meeting. Wishberry. Wishberry. <laughs> Wishberry. Wishberry. Willowberry. Wishberry. Nice red willow. Yeah, Wishberry and Hollow. Yes. They're installing on the 30th. They're going to do some weed eating. Shannon says that's okay. They wanted to leave their installations up. He said no. Yeah. It's for the good, for the best, I think. August, or Two weeks is good. August 31st to August 15th. They're going to put a sign up. I think, I don't think we need to be involved. They have a hand card sign. I told her to, I'm just gonna have her work with Shannon. Nope. Just like, they can decide where the sign goes. Yeah. We don't really care, right? Right, good. That's it. Sorry about that. beautiful. Any other committee comments? They, just to update you on the tennis courts, the city had the two, oh. two courts where we surfaced and um, cracks and digs in and were filled in and whatnot. So they look they look real nice. Okay. And next year they're gonna do the other three. So they've got a good plan going there. Okay. Now, I I have also been super impressed by how much traffic those courts get. Oh, yeah. I I, I never see people I never see those courts get 
every time I'm out there, there's always somebody yeah. playing. It's amazing. Yeah. Can you drink? Welcome to a drink. Anyway, just any other comments? I don't want to cut anybody off. Hi. Motion to adjourn at 7.53.